Hello there, Richard from Digital Foundry here with a look at how gaming performance compares on the new Core i7-6700K versus its less expensive stablemate, the Core i5-6600K. We're comparing stock performance, but we also managed to achieve fairly similar overclocks on both chips, so we're including those metrics here too. To give you an idea on how we've tested processor performance, we paired each chip with an overclocked Titan X, and we're running our gaming benchmark suite, a total of 9 games, at ultra settings, but typically without MSAA or super sampling. The idea here is to attempt to move GPU as the bottleneck and to stress test CPU instead. It's important to understand what the CPU does for gaming. Obviously it processes the game logic and additionally handles tasks such as animation and physics, but crucially it also prepares all of the commands for the GPU in drawing the scene. So ramping up settings to ultra is essential in making sure that the CPU is getting a thorough workout. So the top tier i7 typically commands an 80 to 100 pound price premium over its cut down equivalent, and the question is whether that hefty increase can really be justified. Historically the difference between them has been relatively slight. You get the addition of hyperthreading on the i7, offering a noticeable improvement to multi-threaded applications, video coding for example, and recently Intel has boosted clocks on the i7 too. But we've yet to encounter an i5 that can't be overclocked to match the core stock frequency of an i7. Now, there was a time when games only utilised one or two cores, and for those titles, an overclocked Pentium G3258 remains the best price versus performance processor on the market. And then gradually we saw a migration across to titles using four threads, good for the Core i3 line, which has two cores and four threads, and great for the i5 with its full four cores. Throughout this time, an i7 offered virtually nothing extra for gamers, but times have changed. The new wave of consoles has moved us into the many core era. Out of all the games tested here, all of them, bar Shadow of Mordor, appear to utilise all eight threads available to an i7. However, average frame rate results suggest that the advantages of the i7's hyperthreading are mostly minimal, its stock performance often overcome with an i5 overclock, but it's a different situation when you look at lowest recorded frame rates and the highest frame times, and the amount of stutter you see, where the i5 is generally disadvantaged in several titles. And there are occasions where even 4.5 GHz performance can't match the stock i7 stability. We should remember that our tests here are designed to propel CPU limitations to the forefront, and our contention is that in most titles where GPU is the bottleneck, the difference will be very hard to detect. But the bottom line is this, in many core games that hit CPU hard, the i7-6700K will offer a level of stability in excess of what the equivalent i5 is capable of. But generally speaking, our gut feeling is that the i5 still offers the best sweet spot in terms of price versus performance, but there is an improvement using the i7, especially if you're not overclocking each of the processors. Anyway, that's all we have for you for now. Be sure to check out our other Skylake i7 vids. We've got four generations of i7 battling it out at stock frequencies, plus we have another test where all of them were overclocked to 4.4 GHz. But in the meantime, give us a like if you enjoyed the vid, and subscribe to Digital Foundry for more PC and console tech analysis. For now, thanks for watching. Psycho! The strain is full of highly explosive material! Yep. Oh yeah. This is your plan? Yeah. Come on, you bastards. <laughs>
Targets unreachable. Out of the way. Move. Where the hell is Duchesneau? Oh. If you can't find a weakness to exploit, make one. You've secured the cathedral? Oui, monsieur. Good. Tell Sivan. I'll meet him inside. Opportunity's everywhere. It's on you to take it. You! Get back here with my keys! And if all other plans fail, why not sacrifice yourself for the cause, your life for his, before Altair? That was the Levantine approach. You mean a dagger in broad daylight as I'm cut down where I stand? He sends a powerful message. I'll do it my way. Whatever you think best. Assassin.